Hey everyone, uh, this is Nick. I wanted to give uh, you guys a tutorial on how to do sort of the, the tracing and really minimalist uh, interaction sketches that you pull from images uh, for your for you guys' product interaction posters and any other kind of materials you need. Um, it's a pretty good skill to have. I think it creates really cool sort of minimal uh, sketches that you kind of, you know, you base them off pictures so they're very realistic looking. Um, but ultimately they look really good on a poster. Um, they get a clear message across without actually you having to either use real pictures, which can actually be kind of, uh, you know, a little too detailed, or having to create your own graphics and draw on your own, which can be kind of tough. Um, so I'm going to be showing you how to do this in Inkscape. There's another tutorial on how to do this in Adobe Illustrator. Um, both programs are good. They're both vector graphics, meaning that the uh, images you draw and the graphics are based on mathematical expressions so they look great at any size you can always resize them and they always keep their shape as opposed to raster graphics like in Photoshop or GIMP um, those are pixel based and so if you blow them up then they start to look more pixely and they look worse um, so you definitely want to use a vector graphics program um, Inkscape is nice because it's free and open source I like it it's a simple program it's you know easy it's lightweight it does crash a bit but it's got some good um, autosave features I um, mean, overall, I, I think it's a really nice program. Illustrator is a little more powerful, um, and it's a little more professional, and it might be good for you to learn it if you think you'll do more of this. But overall, I think Inkscape's a great um, great tool to, to use this for. Uh, so what we can do is we'll start by actually uh, creating an image. Um, so I'm going to actually do an image of some of the uh, guys that I've met in Ghana uh, for the ADE course uh, welding. Um, so what I'll do is I'll import um, so what I did there is I went to uh, file uh, let me show you again so I went to file uh, import and I imported uh, I'm going to import an image so I have this welding JPEG file you can do JPEGs PNGs um, GIFs uh, it'll take in most image form formats uh, you can notice it's a pretty small image so I'm going to open that up and I'm going to embed it uh, I'm going to actually embed it into it linking it'll create a link but you really want an Im embedded uh, to actually get the image there. So we'll say OK there. And you'll notice now that the image is in the document. Um, so what we can do is we can actually uh, take the image and we can start tracing it. And that will allow us to create those kind of cool minimalistic sketches. So I'm going to zoom in. Um, the way you can zoom is holding the control key and the scroll wheel. You just do the scroll wheel normally, you go up and down, and if you hold the shift key, you go left and right. Um, those are just some uh, kind of keystroke things in Inkscape. Um, so I'm going to zoom in, and what we'll do is we'll actually, I want to get uh, this image here of, uh, of this guy holding this welding mask. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Bezier Curve tool. And this Bezier Curve tool is sort of the main tool that we're going to be using to trace. And I like to use a tablet. Uh, but you can do this with a mouse or your keypad, it doesn't matter. I just happen to like to use the pen interface. Um, so what I'll do is I'll start laying down a point and I'll click to lay down a point and you can see I'll drag out um, this leader and this is actually kind of the line I'm gonna draw. And what I'll do is if I just select a point here like this, it'll lay a straight one down. If I hold, I'll actually get this uh, Bezier, uh, Bezier kind of tool that will actually allow me to add some curvature to it. So I'm going to add a little bit of curvature to that. And then I'm going to come down here and add some curvature there, here. And I'm just going to trace this out quickly. If you double click, you'll notice you'll close the path. Not a big deal. You can just highlight over this over when you and start adding more points again. It'll close up uh, just the same. So what I'll I'm just going around here be sharp. Come in there, sort of curve up, a little curve, and we'll close it. Now you'll notice that I actually have a full path now. I'll zoom in so we can really take a look at it. Um, it's pretty good, but there's a little bit that I'd like to modify. So for example, um, right here, I think I went a little too far out, and I'd like a little bit more here. So we can use the path editing tool. That's this tool right here. And when we select that, we actually get all the all the data, all the points that I laid down. And I can actually come in here and I'll pull that in and make it a little tighter. Um, I'll pull this one and I'll add a little more curvature there. And I'll pull this one in a little bit tighter as well. 
Um, I realize that here I don't really need all these curve these points. So what I can do is I can add or subtract points here. So I'll delete that point like that. And now this just created kind of a smoother. It's not as jagged. Um, I can do a really similar thing, uh, kind of adjusting this curvature here, just trying to kind of really match the outline of the image. Um, if I want to, I can take curves and I can auto smooth them. So I can do something like that um, and I'll auto smooth the curve. Uh, but overall, this looks pretty good. So what I want to do is now that I have my path actually filled in, uh, my path, I want to fill it in with a color kind of create that, that solid color fill. So I like to use the eyedropper tool. That tool is over here. The eyedropper tool is cool because what you do is you actually select a color on the image and it'll copy and it'll lay down just that color. So let's say I want sort of this gray area here, this dark gray. If I, if I have the eyedropper tool and I select, it will fill in the entire, uh, the entire uh, path with gray. Now you can also come down here into this fill and stroke area and if you double click these, you'll actually build, bring up the uh, menu for this and this allows you to have a lot of control over different colors you can set um, sliders and so if I wanted to make it red I could do that but I, I want it uh, gray the other thing you can do is you can change your stroke now the stroke is sort of the outline of this area you'll notice here that I have a solid stroke and it's black um, if I wanted to not have a stroke I could just kill it um, with the X or I can add it and I can I can uh, change the color if I want. So let's say I wanted to highlight it, I could maybe add it, make it red. But for the purpose of this, I'm going to keep it black. There's also other things you can do. Um, it's really powerful. You can play around with how the edges look. So you can round out the edges, all the joints. You can make them sharp. Um, you can change the width of the stroke. So if you really wanted to be really really thick, you could um, change the width. Um, or you can make it really really thin, so it looks more almost like a pencil drawing. Um, I like to keep mine at about one because they kind of give a nice contrast. Um, you can also change the style. Um, you can put different dashes in. Uh, it's a really nice tool uh, for actually just any kind of diagramming, but for this, I'll let you play around with that a little bit more. So now that we have the mask actually up, the next thing that I want to do is show you how to make uh, sort of the rest of it, so the, the, the shirt and the arm. So what I'm going to do is for, the, for this tutorial, I'm going to actually make uh, the shirt and then this arm here. And so what we'll do is we'll start the same way to trace the shirt and we'll use the Bezier tool and actually come over and start tracing. But one, one of the tricks I'm going to use is because I know that the shirt is underneath the welding mask, I'm going to use sort of the fact that these images, these blocks are layered and I can actually send this behind when I'm done. So I'm going to start really quickly and I'm just going to add a point here inside of the mask and then I'm going to come out here and start tracing really nicely, adding my curvature. I'm interpolating a little bit here because I don't actually have his arm. So I'm sort of just making it up as I go on the inside. Kind of come down here for sharp. And then just really quickly just going around. Once again, kind of adding material where I don't know where it is. Adding a bit of curvature here making this a bit sharper. I'm going to extend the shirt sleeve down just a little more to accentuate it. Coming up here, a little curvature, a little curvature, and then closing it off. So now you'll see that I have uh, this here. I'm going to come back to my path editing tool and I'm going to clean it up a little bit. So I'm going to pull this in. I'm going to pull that out a bit. I'm going to actually delete that one because I don't think it's really necessary. I'm going to pull his shirt out here. I'm going to adjust his shirt sleeve here. Kind of pull in that. Pull that there. Make it a little more like that. And so now I have the shirt. Um, what I'll do is I'll also use the eyedropper tool again and fill it in. But this time I'll choose sort of this maroon color. Um, and maybe I'll come over. It's a little dark. It's a little too close. So I'll come over to the fill and maybe I'll make it a little bit more red. And so now his shirt, he has a kind of a maroon red shirt and a welding mask. So what I can do now is I can actually select this. So come up to the selection tool and I can, I can select the shirt. And what I want to do is I actually want to send it behind the mask. So these tools here will actually allow me to move things, layer little objects forward and back. And so I can actually send it backwards. And now the welding mask is in front of the shirt. 
if I brought it forwards, it's like that. If I send it all the way back, it's behind the picture because that was the other layer. So I'll bring it up just here. And now you'll you see that there's this nice overlap and it creates this nice effect as if the welding mask in front of the shirt. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm actually going to get the arm uh, and that'll be the last part I do for this tutorial just to give you guys a general idea. So once again, Bezier curve tool, I'm gonna come in. I know the arm starts up in here. So I'm just going to quickly do that because I know I'm just gonna overlap it. And then I'm going to use the curve, the curves of the picture and really try and get something that is outlined well. I'm gonna move kind of quickly for this. You can spend as much time or as little time as you'd like, um, depending on how sort of smooth you want your, your images to be. For purposes of this, I'm going pretty quickly. So now I'm gonna zoom in on the arm and just kind of look at how it, how it uh, aligns. I'll edit some of the curves. So for example, let's smooth that out by deleting that point. And we'll move that point there and curve it in a little bit. Move that point there, curve it in. This probably doesn't need to be there. Now we got a much smoother hand. Um, we don't want too much ripple on the arms, so we'll kind of do that. Now we get a nice smooth sort of arm. And then what we'll do is we'll, once again, we'll use the eyedropper tool to fill it. We'll choose a part of the skin, and now we have this. And then we'll select it and send it behind the shirt. And so now what you have ultimately is uh, this image that looks pretty good. Uh, you have your, you've got your arm, your shirt, and your welding mask. And this is a pretty good representation of kind of what the effect you're going for. Very simple, very plain, uh, but it's clean and you have an idea, you really, you do understand a little bit of what's going on. You can always add a little bit of embellishment. So for example, if I wanted to add a little bit on the welding mask, um, I could use some Bezier curves and I could draw sort of where uh, the welding mask uh, would be. Um, you can sort of just draw it in like that and then I can fill that. Um, I'll fill that with, uh, I guess, this black here, um, or maybe this like red, so it'll really kind of come out and stick out. I can sort of see that. I can adjust the colors here, so that gets embellished a little bit. You can always add a little bit more, um, and so that's sort of the general idea. Now, when you want to save this, uh, if you actually select your image, for example, and you delete it, now you have this image, which is just the, the graphic that you want, this nice, clean graphic. The cool thing about this is that uh, you, they're all separate parts, so if you wanted to move them around, like let's say you actually want the helmet to be a little more up, you can do something like that so it's a little higher, or you can move it down so that the welding mask is a little lower. Um, I'm going to go back and just put it back where it was. Uh, you can then group, um, so you can select everything, and then here you can group it, so now it's all one image that moves around together, you can resize it. And like I said, with vectors, it's always the same size, it's always the same um, uh, kind of aspect ratio. It always looks great because it's it's mathematically based and so we can make it as big as we want. You know, we can kind of fill this whole page with this, uh, with this image and make it so that it doesn't actually uh, distort and change. I'm holding the control key while, while I'm doing this to keep the proportions. You can stretch it if you'd like um, and you know kind of like an regular graphics. So the last thing you want to do is you'll save this so we can do a save. We can save it as an SVG. These are all actually the vector file formats um, and so these are the ones that will keep all the mathematical kind of uh, relations in, in check. So when you're working normally I would save it as an Inkscape SVG so we can save that drawing. Uh, what you can then do is if you want to, like if you want to put this and print it out or do something on like a poster um, and you, or, or a PowerPoint or something, you just want a bitmap or a PNG, you can do export bitmap. And what that does is you can select the drawing or the selection or the whole page. If you select the drawing, then it's only going to get this image and it'll leave the rest of it um, transparent. So it's nice to overlay over things. You can choose the dots per inch, you know, set the resolution a bit higher and you can also set the, the sizing. Um, and so that's how you can export export uh, a bitmap or a PNG file of your image. Uh, but for the most part, I suggest sticking with vector format because it will stay a lot cleaner and it won't, it won't degrade over, over um, size changes when, you, when uh, you add them to your posters or your other 
uh, kind of material uh, for the for uh, presentation. Um, so that's pretty much a, a general overview of how to do these sort of simple, minimal uh, sketches uh, for product interaction. Um, it's a nice, it's a nice skill. Uh, like I said, you can basically get in there and make them as smooth and nice as possible. But this is sort of the general kind of quick, like how do you do it? Um, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, I can maybe help you out, uh, possibly. Uh, but hopefully, you actually uh, can follow along with this and can create uh, sort of the graphics that you're looking to create. Um, if you're interested in actually looking at the Illustrator, there should be a link in the sidebar or below um, uh, around here that'll actually show you how to do this very same thing uh, only using uh, the Adobe Illustrator tool. Uh, thanks for watching and good luck with everything.